Howdy YouTube, so I know it's a little bit late for a Halloween video, but I bought the hat and I made a music video. Well, I mean, I, I didn't like make it in the typical fashion where you like actually edit out, um, I guess stuff with, I, I don't know, video editor? I, I don't know, I used uh, C++ and FFmpeg, so... I guess that's making it a little bit more difficult, but it ended up making this kind of neat result. So here, uh, I guess let's let's take a look at it. The video is only a minute and a half long, but either way, I'm gonna have it uploaded separately and I'll put like a link in the description. So, anyways though, um, I guess let's go into the process of this. So this uh, project is kind of, I guess, an elaboration. Or, uh, well, pretty much it reuses most of the code from my previous project, which is like a poster sort of thing that made these images out of sub-images. And a main class I wrote for that simply opens a PPM file, and a PPM file is just kind of a uncompressed uh, image file. If you uh, take a look at one, it kind of just looks like this, and <laughs> It does red, green, and blue pairs, and it has the stated uh, width and height of the image. From that, it just is a just solid list of numbers. So, basically though, with FFmpeg, you can take a video and turn it into a series of PNG images. Probably PPM images too, but I just use image magic to convert them to PPM, so, I know though you can take a series of PPM images and make them into a video directly so I don't have to convert them back to PNG, but um, from there I kind of took the, here, let, me, let me get to it really quick. So this is the actual, I, I guess, main code. So. I pretty much just take in a frame count input. Um, I'm assuming everything's like 640 by 480. So in this case, I use the Caden Live to change the uh, video format to 640 by 480 and 30 FPS. But rather than that, all the other video editing was pretty much just done for this program. So after it uh, converts them to uh, PPM files, it will go through and read in this audio data, which um, I use someone else's uh, project called Audio Waveform. And what that project does is it allow you to create kind of this, uh, I guess, photograph of uh, like volume levels and stuff for a song. So I was able to use that to get the beeps and things like that required to make a music video. So, if you go back here to the uh, main, I guess, IMT main, if you go down and look at the loop that actually iterates through uh, editing the images, it um, reads in the audio data, and if the audio data is above a certain level, so it actually takes the difference in the last frame of audio and the next frame of audio and subtracts them and then it compares them to a portion of the current frame of audio and if the volume level is significantly different it will go and flip the images back and forth also it will create a new color so I wrote a few functions, new functions, I guess, that just kind of flip the video. It's not that hard. I mean, 
It's kind of just like flipping a string back and forth, but with the horizontal axis for the, I guess, PPM files. I also wrote something with called a mirror, which only flips it halfway, which gets kind of that double Euleric effect thing. And it'll just go through those and it'll one after another whenever the volume is uh, past a certain level. So whenever there's a beat, it'll pretty much uh, change. So now the pattern in the background is actually pretty neat. So in my class here, I wrote a, oh, I think it's actually in the .h file, but you can see there's a operator that's being, I guess, overloaded. And in that operator, it's pretty much taking all the black values and adding the new image on top of that. So it allows me to actually put in a background image beneath the current image. So I was trying to think of some cool ideas for a background image. And the first thing that I thought of was, oh, why not Conway's Game of Life? So Conway's Game of Life is kind of like this cell growth game. It's implemented with some very simple rules. So, as you can see, uh, I count the amount of neighbors that each uh, cell has. So how it detects if it's a cell, it's just if the uh, red value of a pixel equals 255. So from there, if, the, uh, if it has like less than two neighbors, the cell dies. If it has more than three, the cell uh, well, dies. And if it has exactly three, a new cell is born or it gets to continue to live. So that uh, actually kind of produces some cool video effects. So if I go to, I think it's my third WebM, I'm reading the audio data to create some random noise in the WebM, but I am essentially just programming uh, Conway's Game of Life. So, albeit that does look kind of neat, but it doesn't create like a cloud effect. So, that's where we move on to the, I guess, uh, fifth WebM I made. So, what this does, oh my god, I should need to put like a seizure warning on this video or something. but. That's a kind of messed up effect in the thing went away when I started using the PPM files directly instead of converting them to PNG and moving them through FFmpeg. But as you can see, it's kind of the cloud effect in the main video. So all I did was I wrote a function called, I think it's called red blur in my uh, CPP file functions and just upload that really quick. So what red blur does is it takes the red value and every time it equals the value input, it will go and set the neighbors to a red value, but a slightly lower red value. So that essentially uh, then just calls itself until red is less than or equal to zero, so it's a recursive function. So from there, it just traces every uh, game of life cell to the point where it kind of has like this kind of cloud effect. So because it's only red though, I had to make a, another function. And what this function does, oh my God, I forgot what it's called, but somewhere in here, Okay, it's called color shift. And what color shift does is it shifts the colors from RB, like red, green, and blue, just down one each time. So the red value is now the green value, and the green value is now the blue value. And when you call it again, you know, like the green value is now the blue value, and the blue value is now the red value or something. So because of that, I can have it kind of just focused only on the uh, red value and still get interesting colors. And of course, since it only uses the red value, I can set a randomized um, integer kind of just for the other two values. So from that, I can get a full color spectrum, even though um, I'm only using the, I'm using the red values to store data. So yeah, um, let's see if I have like, I can go down to, 
the WebM list. I'm not quite sure what all of these are, but as you can see, there's also some quality issues with FFmpeg when it converts from you know, a PNG to just like an AVI or WebM file. I don't exactly know the issue, but uh, with PPMs, it does look clear, and I was able to get something like this. And that's, of course, after I changed the color data. But it's a lot better than the prior kind of grainy sort of look. So, yeah, I guess in total, though, that's how you kind of make a video going from something like this to something like um, this. So, yeah, I guess that's my uh, little programming video, and um, I'll upload the code on GitLab later. So, if you're interested in trying it, although it does seem to take a little bit more dependencies, and I feel like this program's really, like, application-specific, but you, it might be interesting to take a look at my, like, uh, functions files. I have some stuff in there that I'd even use. Like, if I go through, like, the functions list, there's like a blank canvas, which kind of just creates like a checker value, checkerboard value thing. Um, there's uh, also, uh, there's of course stuff for reading and writing the PPM files and uh, image black and white, which converts the image to just a black and white image. Image two-tone, which I'm actually using to on the uh, audio data to make it a little bit easier to process, but essentially it just takes the image file and turns it into like a, a solely like two pixel sort of black white deal, but with a input color value. And um, I, okay, I don't know quite know what to replace the, oh, oh no, replace is just like a, a remove sky function, but a little bit more, uh, I think, specific, like I don't think it uses a color range. Oh, no, it uses a color range. And uh, red grain, which is kind of just uh, adds noise to a uh, image. I do use that whenever the audio is past a certain level. But, and then of course there's like the flip and mirror functions. And then here's my trace function, which is recursive. And, and there's also a normal grain function and a scan grain function, which kind of makes it so it has all those little neat scan lines in the video. So, yeah, um, I guess that's my video. Um, have a good one, and I will wave goodbye with the weird cat thing. I don't know. Have a good one. Bye.